In this series of lectures, you will learn all the important concepts of Kubernetes, starting with what container orchestration and Kubernetes are. Let's say we are working on two different microservice applications, product service and coupon service, which use a database server, and the product service in turn uses the coupon service to get its work done. As a developer or a DevOps engineer, the very first step to deploy these applications to staging, dev or even testing is to create an image or containerize these microservice applications using tools like Docker. These images will be based off an operating system and depending on the kind of application, you will have Java, Node.js, etc. on top of it. Then if it is a Java web application, you will have application server and finally your application layer itself. Once you have this image, as a developer, you can launch one or two containers on your local machine to test your microservices quickly. But for production deployment, you will need hundreds and even thousands of these containers up and running. That is where container orchestration comes in. Container orchestration is a process of launching multiple containers or a cluster of containers along with providing various services or non-functional requirements for these microservice applications, starting with fault tolerance. If one of the containers goes down, then there should be a backup or there should be hundreds of backups for every container in the cluster so that the clients will never see errors coming back. Second, these containers should be automatically scaled based on the demand scale up and scale down. So if there is too much load or incoming requests that are coming in for a particular microservice, automatically that particular container should be scaled up. New instances or new containers should be launched. And when the demand goes down, those containers should be automatically cleaned up or destroyed so that the resources are used optimally. Once these microservices are present on the cluster, they should be automatically able to discover each other over the network and communicate with each other as required. In this case, the product service will communicate with the coupon service and both these microservices will communicate with the DB server container as required. Also, these applications should be able to access the world outside and other applications outside the cluster should also be able to access these microservices. Public access should be possible over the network. Last and very important piece, rolling updates and rollbacks. This is what makes Kubernetes so popular. Rolling updates meaning if we have a new version of product service, let's say. So we have made some changes to the product service application and now we want to deploy the new version onto the cluster. These container orchestration tools will allow us to do that using rolling updates, meaning while the applications are rolling, we can do the update so that the clients, the end users will see zero downtime. The way that is possible, the older version containers will be still up and running. Some of the containers that have the older version of the software will be still up and running as the new containers come up. And slowly, as the new containers come up, all the traffic will be routed to those new containers and the old containers will be destroyed. That is nothing but rolling updates so that the end users will not see any downtime. And rollbacks is a very powerful feature. When a container orchestration tool says that it supports rollbacks, that means you can roll back to a certain version of the cluster. Every time you do an update to the cluster, it will maintain all those versions for you. And at some point, if you think there is a problem with certain version of coupon service or product service or this DB server, you can tell the container orchestration tool like Kubernetes that I want to go back to a certain version and it will do that for you with a single command. Now that you know what container orchestration is, Kubernetes is one of the most popular container orchestration tool that gives all of these, creating a cluster and all these non-functional requirements right out of the box. Kubernetes in Greek means helsman or ship pilot. So Kubernetes tells us as developers or DevOps engineers that you have done a great job in containerizing your applications and loading them onto the ship. Now hand them over to me and let me navigate that ship to 
whichever environment you want so it will create a cluster for our test environment taking all the containers that we give it or it can even create a prod ready cluster for us with simple steps kubernetes is also referred to as cube or k8s because there are eight alphabets between k and 8 in kubernetes k and s in kubernetes and it is pronounced as kates so you can either use cube as a shortcut or kates or k8s or kubernetes it's up to you cube makes ci and cd continuous integration and continuous deployment super easy in a way it reverses the entire process once you start using kubernetes in our organization the devops engineer can simply set up the cluster even for a production environment and just hand that cluster over to a dev team and then the dev team can do the production level deployments very easily that's the power of kubernetes if not production level deployments at least you can make sure that your application is production ready by deploying your applications or containerized applications onto a dev cluster or a test cluster the cloud native computer computing foundation cncf is responsible for developing and licensing of kubernetes kubernetes or kets is so popular that all the cloud providers like uh, google cloud provider azure aws have inbuilt support for kubernetes google kubernetes engine is kubernetes support in gcp google cloud similarly aws elastic container service is uh, aws support for kubernetes it has lot more services as support for kubernetes cops etc and azure kubernetes service is the inbuilt kubernetes service within azure so we can use these services right out of the box from these clouds or we can install kubernetes on our laptops we can install kubernetes on the organization's bare metal servers or we can use the instances provided by these cloud providers and install kubernetes from scratch on our own or you can use this ready to use services so depending on the organization you are working for that will vary i have seen organizations where they have their own on premise servers bare metal servers on top of it they will create their own kubernetes clusters and i have seen organizations which use these service providers and i have seen organizations where they use these cloud providers but they create their own kubernetes cluster on top of these cloud providers instead of using this ready to use services so in this lecture you have learnt what container orchestration is container orchestration is a process of taking the images we create as devops engineers or developers and launch hundreds and thousands of containers that are required for our production and uh, while doing that while creating that cluster container orchestration process also gives us several non functional services like fault tolerance on demand scalability these microservices are automatically discovering each other they should be able to access the services outside and vice versa rolling updates which is a very powerful feature with zero downtime our applications should be upgraded and if you want to go back to a certain version of the cluster that should be possible through rollbacks kubernetes is so popular because it provides all these cluster creation and all these services right out of the box kubernetes in uh, greek stands for helmsman which is uh, ship pilot so it tells that you have done a great job loading all your containers onto the ship hand that ship over to me and i can navigate it smoothly on to test stage production etc you have also learned that you can easily install kubernetes on your local machine to deploy your applications and test them you can uh, install kubernetes on a bare metal server on your organization or onto a cloud like google aws azure you can also use inbuilt services available for kubernetes when you use these cloud providers one important point you have learned is you can even do production level deployments very easily the devops engineers will simply create a cluster for you and you as a developer can set up a ci cd that will push your applications to that cluster if you found this video helpful please do comment and share if you enjoy my teaching style do check out my full stack learning paths for java python angular react along with devops tools like docker kubernetes and amazon web services you can find the latest links to these courses with maximum discounts applied by going to my website www.bharatthippireddy.com 
Keep learning, sharing and growing.